الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله uh, I would like to welcome the brothers and the sisters in the first session of the series of Ramadan We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our siyam and our qiyam and our seeking of knowledge and reminders. Allahumma ameen. Allah the Almighty is the one with the ultimate wisdom. He does what He wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He is the most knowledgeable, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He favors people, some over others, as He said with regards to the messengers, these are the messengers we favored some over others. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, favors places over others. He made Mecca the most sacred place on earth. And he favors times, periods over other periods, seasons over other seasons. And Allah Azza wa Jal singled out Ramadan to be the best season of the year, the best month of the year. Allah Azza wa Jal chose it to be the period where people fulfill one of the pillars of their faith and to obtain and achieve a very, very important and precious and noble objective. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The month of, the Ramadan, of Ramadan is the month during which Allah Azza wa Jal sent down the Quran as guidance to the people. And He obliged people to fast it throughout the time. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ All you who have believed, fasting was made compulsory upon you, like it was made upon those before you. You know, this in itself makes it much easier to fast when you know that you are not singled out with a command. Makes you feel comfortable, makes it easier, right? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps that you achieve, that you attain taqwa. Taqwa in its definition is simply abstaining from what Allah Azza wa Jal prohibited, fulfilling all that Allah Azza wa Jal commanded, and placing a shield between yourself and the fire of hell and the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now when one achieves this, he has actually achieved servitude, which is the highest rank any human being can achieve. When Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to talk about Muhammad in the best manner, he called him Abd, a slave. Alhamdulillah, الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب. All praises due to Allah, who sent down His book upon His slave. سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا. Glory be to the one who ascended His slave during the night. So when Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to praise Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He called him Abd. Because achieving servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal is the highest rank anyone can obtain. So fasting, Ramadan is a means to achieving this objective. There are many, many virtues for the month of Ramadan. But I wanted to start with this, 
because it's the most important one, achieving servitude. You see, Ramadan, the essence of Ramadan is not simply to abstain from eating and drinking and having intercourse with one's spouse. It is to obtain piety. It is to achieve servitude. You see, fasting is a secret between the slave and his Lord. You'll be sitting alone in your house, in your bedroom, behind door, closed doors. So you can do anything. You can eat, you can drink, you can have intercourse with your wife. No one sees you but Allah. And this being a secret between the slave and his creator is how one achieves servitude. servitude. How is that? You're only abstaining because you love him, because you obey him. Because you don't want to anger him. Because you don't want to be punished by him. Because you want to please him. And this is servitude. You're refraining because of that. And this is the essence of servitude. One person one time told me we were in Ramadan and fasting. He said, Subhanallah, this amazing secret of fasting during Ramadan one might sweat and a drop of sweat comes here and enters his mouth and he spits it. He will be in rinsing his mouth during wudu and he will spit it. No one would see, no one would notice if just a small bit of that wudu entered. If you allow it to enter, no one would notice, even if someone's standing right next to you. But this secret is between the slave and his Lord. And this is the fascinating issue about this secret between the slave and his Lord. And this is why it is indeed a means of achieving servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal chose Ramadan out of the rest of the months of the year when Ibn Kathir was commenting on on the verse Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an the month of Ramadan during which the Qur'an was revealed he said Allah Azza wa Jal selected Ramadan and made, made it distinct over all other months by the virtue of sending down the Qur'an during it. Another virtue for this month, for fasting this month, is that fasting it is the fourth pillar of Islam. How many pillars do we have in Islam, young boy? Five. There you go. Excellent. So, the fourth of these five is Ramadan. Fasting Ramadan. As in the narration of Abdullah ibn Umar, in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, Islam was founded over five pillars. And then he mentioned these five, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the two testimonies of faith, shahadat an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah. And then, salah. Then, zakah. Then, fasting. Then, Hajj. So he mentioned these five and made Siyam the fourth. <clears throat> so fulfilling it is fulfilling one of the pillars of one's faith, which is extremely essential. Allah Azza wa Jal, and this is noticed in all the commands in general. Allah commands us to do something, but then gives us incentives to do them and fulfill them. Right? He commanded us to fulfill this pillar, the fourth pillar of Islam, fasting the month of Ramadan. But then he gave us incentives, gifts, prizes, as a result of obeying him. Although, if we do not obey, we will be punished. But Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Ya'lamu Man Khalaq, does he not know the nature of those whom he created? 
He knows our nature, so he knows that we need to be motivated, we need to be reminded, we need to be pushed in order to do, in order to fulfill, right? So the Prophet ﷺ comes and this hadith is in Al-Bukhari. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ دَمِّهِ Whoever fasts Ramadan, out of faith and in hope for the reward, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. It's like resetting the device, you know? You know when they say factory reset? Well, this is what we do. We do a factory reset button. We push it and we come as, as if we were just born now. Subhanallah. Man qama Ramadan, another virtue. Pray in Qiyam during Ramadan. Man qama Ramadan, and this is also in Al Bukhari and Muslim. Man qama Ramadan, siya iman and wahtisaban, gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dabbi. Whoever prays Qiyam during Ramadan, gufira lahu, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. Imam al Nawawi, when he was explaining the book of Muslim and mentioned this narration, he said, Qiyam here is referring to Salatul Taraweeh. So one might say, okay, we're only praying taraweeh. Well, yeah, this is actually what is meant by this, uh, by this narration. Again, Allah Azza wa commands and facilitates. He obliges and He makes a way to achieve very easy. During the month of Ramadan, as one of the virtues, which facilitate the performance of the act of worship, of fasting, is that Allah, and this is also in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Allah Azza wa Jal blocks the ways to sinning and makes it easier to perform piety and righteousness. The Prophet wasallam said when the month of Ramadan starts, three things happen in this narration, of course, there are other narrations or other wordings and versions that list other things. Number one, the gates of Jannah are all open. They're ready to receive. Number two, the gates to hellfire are closed. In one of the wordings that, are, that is not of Al-Bukhari, he said, حَتَّى لَا يَبْقَى بَابٌ Until the, not even a single door of hell is open. It's all sealed. It's all closed for, during Ramadan. وَصُفِّدَتْ وَفِي لَفْظٍ وَسُلْسِلَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ The devils will be chained. Will be sh Subhanallah. Why is this a mot motivating hadith? Because who actually whispers to me and you? It's the devil. When Allah chains the devils. Right? Al-Qadi Iyad said, commenting on this hadith, he said, this chaining of the devils facilitates the act of worship for the slave as it reduces the authority and power of the devil over mankind and their ability to disturb their fast or their act of worship. So Allah opens the gate of Jannah, it's an incentive, closes the gates of hell, and takes care of that source of disturbance, of whispering, which is the devils. And there is another version that says, الجان, And the rebellious jinn are also uh, chained on that day, on that, uh, during that month. Subhanallah, diversity in acts of worship makes... Uh, performing them much easier. I was asking one of my shiuch once about the wisdom of the fasting of Dawood and why is it the best and why is the Qiyam of Dawood the best? You know, fasting of Dawood is alternating one day. You fast every other day. And the Qiyam of Dawood is that you sleep one third of the night, uh, you sleep one half of the night, you stand up for prayer one third of the night, and then you sleep one sixth of the night. Right? I said, Sheikh, what is the wisdom? He said, scholars said, so that the slave does not get accustomed to something 
It becomes a routine otherwise. He would not feel anything. But when you fast a day, and then you break your fast, and then as soon as you break your fast, you don't go again and fast again, and then you suffer a little bit, and then you go and break your fast. Likewise, you sleep a bit, and then you stand up for prayer. And notice the sleeping is longer than the Qiyam. It's one half, and the Qiyam is only one third. Right? So, diversity in acts of worship makes it much easier and more tolerated for the sleep. Amongst the acts of worship that the Prophet ﷺ himself used to do is learning the Qur'an, reviewing the Qur'an that is, and spending charity. In the book of Al-Bukhari, Ibn Abbas describes the Prophet ﷺ. He said, the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of all people. That's in general. He is the most generous. Be you, you know how can you can become very generous when this dunya is of no value to you? This is the only way you can be generous because if it has any, val any significance in your heart, trust you me, you will not spend generously if you ever spend. But when your objective when your vision is going up, when you're looking to Al Firdaus Al A'la, then looking down is no, not important to you at all. Kana Ajwad al Nas. He used to be the most generous of all people, and he used to be the most in generosity during the month of Ramadan. And then, so this is the part talking about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Spending charity and being generous. And then he said, uh, Jibreel used to come down and review the Quran with him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, except for the last year where he reviewed it twice with him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's the month of, Ramad, of the month of Quran. Quran was revealed in it, as we mentioned, as Allah Azza wa said. The Prophet Sallallahu attached great importance to recitation and revision of the Quran. And it was the uh, uh, known famous behavior of all of the scholars of the Salaf, the righteous predecessors. Is that when the, time, when the month of Ramadan starts, everything is put on hold. Everything is put on pause. They used to stop their circles of, of knowledge, teaching people, and attend to the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, reviewing the Qur'an. Performing Umrah is a praiseworthy act of worship. But during Ramadan, it has a special value. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, was talking to one of the ladies of Al-Ansar. Abdullah ibn Abbas tells the story. The Prophet وسلم, asked her, what prevented you from performing Hajj with us this year? She said, well, we only have two camels we used to fetch water with and bring it to the house. And my husband and my son took one and went to Hajj, and there was only one left for me to use to fetch water. He said, okay, when Ramadan comes, perform Umrah. Because performing Umrah during Ramadan is equal to performing Hajj. This is the wording of Al-Bukhari. The wording of uh, Imam Muslim added, he said, it is equivalent to performing Hajj with me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What a virtue. Now, scholars commented on this, and Munawi, Rahmatullahi Alaihi, said, this does not mean that it is equivalent to the actual performance of Hajj, but it rather means 
it is equivalent to its reward. So the one who did not perform Hajj cannot go to Umrah during Ramadan and say, I'm done with Hajj with the pretext of having performed Umrah during Ramadan based on this hadith. This is not a correct understanding. The correct understanding is that you get the reward of performing Hajj. And in the narration of Muslim, as if you've performed Hajj with the Prophet Wasallam, if you perform Umrah uh, during Ramadan. One of the uh, acts of worship that uh, were known to be performed by the Prophet Wasallam, as we are informed by our mother Aisha radiallahu anha wa arda, and this is reported also by Al-Bukhari. He said the Prophet وسلم, used to perform i'tikaf during the last 10 nights of Ramadan. I'tikaf. Let me explain what i'tikaf is, the essence of i'tikaf. See, i'tikaf, the technical uh, definition for it is to seclude oneself in one of the houses of Allah Azza wa for the purpose of worship. Right? So you go and stay in one of the masajid for the last 10 nights. You reside in the masjid. Eat, drink everything there. Sleep. Right? With the intention of being in seclusion with Allah so, you that, so that you can worship Him. Now, many people have a wrong understanding of i'tikaf and it becomes a social gathering rather than an act of worship. You know, I've been in some of the masajid in i'tikaf and it, it turns into a restaurant that has an open buffet and people just sit, laugh, talk, eat, drink, eat, drink, from Taraweeh to Qiyam, from Qiyam to Fajr. Where is the spirit of i'tikaf? It is lost when it is performed in this manner. When one performs i'tikaf, he needs to be serious about i'tikaf. He needs to be serious about rescuing himself. He needs to be serious about reaching the night of Al-Qadr, which is another virtue of the virtues of Ramadan. Allah Azza wa Jal instilled in it Laylatul Qadr. In the book of Imam Ahmad, it's classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet Wasallam said, in Ramadan there is one night that is equivalent to 1,000 years of worship. 1,000 months of worship, not years, I apologize. That's one night. The work of one night is equivalent to 1,000 months. This is roughly about 83 years in one night. So if you worship Allah for 83 years, none of these 83 years have Laylatul Qadr in them. It is only then that you will break even with Laylatul Qadr. With the condition that we worship Allah correctly. We focus. We have a mission to achieve. We're sincere with Allah Azza wa Jal. We're serious about our acts of worship. And then we hope Allah Azza wa Jal would accept from us. Brothers, is there anyone or sisters is there anyone who doesn't suffer from one thing or another? School? Your boss? Your son? Your daughter? Your wife? Your husband? Your car? Your real estate? Your business? Your mother? Your father? Kinship? Everyone has a problem. Now, who is the one who has the control over this and can make it end? Allah. So, to take a shortcut to solve these problems, ask the one who can. 
as some of the scholars said, when you go to a scholar and weep and weep and weep and weep, the best thing he will tell you is, may Allah help you. So they say, why don't you then directly go to Allah to help? Dua is a very, very, very effective tool, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, if you do it sincerely to Allah from your heart and you truly put your trust and reliance upon Him, rest assured, your matter is solved. One of the scholars was approached by a, one of his students and he said, I have a serious problem. He said, I have the solution for you. Two, two, two. He said, what's two, two, two? He said, two o'clock, perform two rakas and shed a couple of tears. He will help you. But then he said, don't test Allah. When you ask him, make sure that you're sure. Make sure that your heart is firm, that he can and that he will. And this is what is called husnul Thinking good of your Lord, asking him, believing that he can and that he will. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't say, oh Allah this and oh Allah that and mm, is this going to happen? It doesn't happen in a day or two or three or a week or two. Oh, okay, so maybe it's not going to happen. That's not polite with Allah. Because we don't set conditions on Allah. Okay, I need this done by tonight. No. You ask Him. You call upon Him. From the deepest part of your heart with trust and reliance and confidence. And leave the rest to Him. Wallahi, he will respond. He will relieve you. He'll take care of you. Because Allah loves us. Allah loves us and loves the best for us. But we, unfortunately, we don't exchange the same. We claim love to Him, but we don't obey Him. Al-Imam Ahmad reports that the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah Azza wa Jal frees people from the fire of hell every day during Ramadan. So this opportunity is repeated throughout the month. The opportunity of rescuing ourselves from the fire of hell is something confirmed by the Prophet ﷺ if we are deserving. You know, it happens every day, but for those who deserve it, who, who are worthy of it, just having the title or the label Muslim, or your name happened to be Hazim or Muhammad or Ahmed or Abdullah or Mahmoud or... That doesn't get you anywhere. Your actions, your heart need to coincide with what you claim with your tongue. Now, one thing that a lot of people uh, miss out on is the reward of praying the full night from Salatul Isha to Salatul Fajr. That's easily obtained as the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and this is reported by Imam Ahmad classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, whoever prays behind the Imam until he concludes, it is as if he had prayed the entire night. Can you imagine? Standing on your feet for the entire night. What is it now? Eight hours or so? Seven hours? You get the reward of that if you persevere and remain patient with the Imam 
and don't haste him after the four, the first four rak'ahs, you know, the first set of four, and then you just exit. Oh, he's reading, he's reciting too long, he's reciting three verses instead of two. Yeah, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's very saddening. Some people actually make a, a survey before they start Ramadan. You know, they go to the neighboring masajid looking for the imam who has the shortest salah. And when Ramadan starts, that masjid's parking lot and the street is blocked. And why? Because as soon as you go in, you finish and you go out. That's how fast. And this is not, this is not, a, I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. This is, this is true. One time, uh, I was late, so I prayed Isha and I had to pray Taraweeh in another masjid. I decided that I will not make the other masjid. So on the way, I decided to stop so I can make my Taraweeh. So I stopped. I parked across the street from the masjid. So on the opposite end, the opposite side that is. By the time I entered the masjid, meaning I crossed this side and this side, he had finished four rakahs. And I caught him in the sixth by the time I made my way into the masjid. Six rakahs in, in like a couple of minutes. What is this? There's no, there's no life to that salah. Are we just trying to say, Alhamdulillah, we prayed taraweeh? What benefit did you get? See, if you don't benefit from the act of worship, then that def defeats the purpose of the entire worship. Brothers, these and sisters, these are virtues and merits of Ramadan and fasting Ramadan and the days of Ramadan and the nights of Ramadan. We can list more and we can bring other statements of scholars, but this is not the point. The point is here. What am I going to do? How am I going to take advantage of these prizes that are set by Allah? How am I going to utilize this opportunity to obtain as much as I can and free myself from as much liability as I can? This is the question. The question is not, oh, mashallah, what else is there about Ramadan? No, the question is, what will you get from these during Ramadan? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to act upon what we hear and what we say and to make us amongst those who are saved from the fire of hell, those who are freed from the fire of hell, those who please Allah, and with whom he, Azza wa Jal, will be pleased. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.